Hi, welcome to the show. I'm Jerome Cleary, and we have a great show for you today. We have the infamous Paul Kent, a local West Hollywood resident, local resident of Los Angeles now, and he is going to tell us all about behind the scenes as a professional actor on the set, as a screen actor, guild actor, and an after actor on the, on the set. And it's not easy to become that because you could work <laughs> here for a long, long time and never even be in SAG. You have to figure out how to join SAG so you can double your salary, That's right. even as an extra. Because if you're non-union, it only pays 54 for eight. Union is 115 for eight. Now, before we get into all the specifics of the job and how you ended up working as a professional extra, as an actor, why don't you first tell us, because a lot of people don't know the history of where you came from, that you're a native, and what, right. how you got started. So tell us first, where are you from? I'm from Arcadia, California, which is where the Santa Anita racetrack is. Mm -hmm. I went to Pasadena City College and got an AA degree in communications. Mm -hmm. Then I went to UCLA and got a BA degree in television and motion picture production and writing. And I had an agent for writing for like six months, and I was doing office jobs, and he was submitting me for things. And I was thinking, well, what am I going to do for a full-time job next? And I didn't want to go to school yet. So I decided to go back and get a master's degree in business. So that took up three more years. And then I could also write and be submitting, too. Oh, my God, that's, that's amazing. I mean, you have like a, a, a great deal of education. I didn't yeah. know this before. Yeah, I have an MBA. And then you uh, then eventually... But I even with that, you know, I still would go to interviews like toward the end of the master's degree, and I thought, I'm going to have to be like a serious businessman, and they started talking to me, and I was kind of like too goofy for that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but, but let me ask you this, though. You graduated from UCLA with an MBA? With a BA. A BA. Okay, and then you decided to, what was, you, did you first start working at Screen Actors Guild in their offices? No, no, no. I was like, for six months, I worked like in um, government office in Arcadia while I had an agent, while I was trying to be a writer, because the goal of a UCLA film student is to sell their screenplay, which will give them the entree into everything in the industry. Because if you sell your screenplay, then you might be able to, you know, direct it, and then you don't have to do, like, all the other jobs that you don't want to do. But did you have any desire to be an actor in the time? I probably always did, but that came later. Did you ever do any theater in Arcadia or Pasadena or growing up? No. You never did any? My outlet was my cassette tape recorder. I used to do the Paul Kent show on my tape recorder after school. I would just like record it and then do like 30 minute shows. I would talk about everybody in my class. Wait, really? There was the Paul Kent show on audio cassette way yeah. before? But people, like, yeah. people couldn't get copies of it. Like from fourth grade through high school. Do you still have the cassettes? Well, I made a mistake because I kept using the same one over and over again. So, like, after I heard it for a while, I would go uh, uh, rewind it and then do another one on top of it. You were very thrifty with that one because that was for so like five years. Yeah. Would, um, no. So then you, how did you end up uh, in the offices of Screen Actors Guild working as an office worker? Oh, okay. So after I had the MBA, then I got a job at the prize company for the all-new dating game and the $100,000 pyramid when those were running. It was the company that gave away like the uh, consolation prizes. Wow, this is the early 80s? This is like 87. Oh, 87, okay. So the MBA was like December 85. And then all of 86, I was doing like insurance jobs and other kinds of office jobs that were more local to Pasadena and because I was back living with my parents. So then when I, I was working in the office and then when those jobs ended, I worked for an agent once after the prize company and that was like in Sherman Oaks, and I was living in Hollywood, actually on Orange, which is a few blocks from where SAG used to be mm -hmm. when it was on Hollywood Boulevard. Right. So I made a list of where, what do I want to do, where do I want to work next, and I thought, well, I could just walk to work. So I went and applied there, and I got a job in the agency department, and that was just answering the phone all day, people calling in, and they say, who represents oh. Robin Williams, and then mm -hmm. you like punch it up and CAA, and you get the number out all day long, you just do that. It was just phone call after phone call. But did you, do that from, did you do that same job for many years at SAG? I thought you worked in the contract department. Yeah, I did that. You have to be there at least 90 days, and then all the jobs are posted on boards, and then you can apply for them, and then you can move up. But the yeah. whole time you're at SAG, working at Screen Actors Guild when it was on Hollywood Boulevard, you never thought, well, I really would like to be an actor. You never thought that the whole time? No, I guess I just like the celebrity and um, the business and watching movies and somehow being a part of it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think of myself as an actor at the time. Okay, so now we're in the late 80s. Like I thought 80s. it was impossible, I guess. Impossible because you saw what people's salaries were and nobody was making a living as an actor? Or I didn't even know like who you would call or even though I knew some of the agents, they had such a big background, these actors in training, right. and they really loved it. And 
I didn't really want to do plays and be in theater workshops. But there was nobody at SAG working along with you in those offices that was an actor. Everybody else were really just right fashion on. people. Right. So how did it come about? Like, so we're in 87, 88. How long did you work at SAG? Till September 91. Okay, and then so from there, years. you worked for four years, then what happened? Where did you work next? Okay, when that job ended, that's when I was still living in Burbank, and I actually lived across from the Warner Brothers Ranch, mm -hmm. like near Pass Avenue, and um, they were always filming Growing Pains. They had the sign out there, and I guess I was getting curious about it and living near Universal Studios and always passing all the signs at Warner Brothers. And then during that time, 91, um, I was thinking, now what am I going to do now? I've never lived in West Hollywood. I don't really like the people in my building. I don't want to live in Burbank anymore. I want to get more involved with the community in West Hollywood. Maybe I should try to live there at least for a couple years or something. Is this when you moved to Mediterranean Village? Yeah, I, I moved to Mediterranean <laughs> Village, the infamous now How long did you live there village. for? <laughs> that was like October 92 through March or April of 93. Okay, now. And that's, it, I didn't know you yet. Yes. At that point. But, but at one point, we're leading up to the part you've told me before in the past, right. as we've talked as friends, you got a temp job at Century Cable. Continental Cable? Which one? Oh, which is now here, Adelphia Cable. Oh, you got a job out here? Yeah, but it was Century. But where was it, where were you working in the office here? Or yeah, I worked in, right here in customer service. Oh, as part of it. Look, we have but, a, a, a coworker but, here. But right I wanted. Uh, but there's another path leading to. Oh, that. okay. Let me hear this. Okay. okay, so I had moved to West Hollywood, and I was always in the neighborhood. And I said, well, where can I work now? I'll try to work at West Hollywood City Hall in some kind of clerical capacity or mm -hmm. whatever I can do to get my foot in the door. So I went there and they sent me to an agency to take all the computer tests and typing tests. And to train. To train, yeah, yeah, to prove that I had the scores, mm -hmm. you know, because so, they don't do it right there at West Hollywood City Hall. Unfortunately, I didn't get the job at West Hollywood City Hall, but that same agency sent me to Century Cable. And then I had the training for customers. Well, they'll, they'll hire anybody. Yeah, they'll just hire anybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they hired you, and what were you doing here? They trained us like for um, two months to learn all the cable channels. Mm -hmm. And I think that was in Eagle Rock at the Eagle Rock facility. Then they sent me to the answer the phones in customer service at the branch that's near Fairfax and Santa Monica Boulevard. It's still there? Yeah. It's a little office. Just east yeah. Yeah, of um, Fairfax on Did the Did you north work side. there long? That was like two or three months. Okay. But this this is bigger over here in Santa Monica. On but but what happened during that time? You suddenly realized that there was this separate channel, which was public access. This is how you started your public access career. That's what, right. I wanted to go into this part. So how did that happen? Right, because I worked like right on the other side of this wall in customer service. I was curious about oh, here access. in Santa Monica here. Yeah, right okay, here. Okay. And um, in fact, right here in the control room, I'd walk by during my lunch hour with because the control room is like right next to the lunch room, mm -hmm. and you you know if you work here, you can just go around the building. I found out about Skippy Low, and everybody was talking about Skippy Low, and then he'd be taping his shows, and then I didn't know that they had you could do a half hour, you have your own show. I always wanted to. I, that, I guess that was in the back of my mind. You can have your own show. You don't have to audition, and it's actually going to air because mm -hmm. you know going to UCLA, the only people that see your student films are other students and the parents and anyone you invite. I wanted something that everybody could see that has TV. But you also realized you could film your own show with a video camera that you could take out or, or in West Hollywood. Right. So how did it lead up, you ended up West Hollywood and start filming your show? Because you filmed your right. show a lot at your apartment building. Right, I inquired at this office and I took their classes and I did my first episode here. And you learn the editing, you can use the cameras, you can check out the equipment over here. But I was living closer to West Hollywood so then I just started taking classes there as well. And then that's where I did most of the uh, work. So did you take their camera out at public access once you took the orientation, or did you have your own camera? I had my own camera. Okay. I, I did go and get a camera. So that little video camera you filmed, how many episodes of your show? Well, it eventually got knocked over and broke, so then I did have to use my camera or the other cameras. But, but yeah. how many years? You worked in your show for four or five years. It started Labor Day 1994, and it ended probably in June of 99. 